ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Suppose the Hamiltonian is kinetic energy plus potential energy, and you are putting potential energy like harmonic oscillator, hydrogen atom. They are all called time-independent potential energy. You know when you will get time-dependent potential energy? You can start having, you know, time-dependent electric field on a charged particle. Then the potential energy will be actually time-dependent. Right? But we are not going to consider that at least for this course. In this course, your Hamiltonian, which we are going to take, is always time independent. So this is a very simple thing. If the operator is independent of time, you can take all the things from one side. So this will give you a log function, and then this will give you a IHT, and you will have some constant. Then you can solve it and get this equation. I is h operator on psi, and if you take b to be only a function of x and p, b also in general is an operator, and of course kinetic energy operator is p squared over 2m. Hamiltonian will be p plus v. So in such cases, I can write I h cross del psi by psi to be integral of h hat t d t. H is independent of time. We can pull it out. Go from t naught to t. And that will give you h t t minus t naught. What is this left hand side? Left hand side is log function of psi. Psi h cross log psi is h hat t minus t naught. Take the exponential on both sides, and then you will get. So we have I h cross del by del I h cross del psi by psi equal to h t minus t naught. Psi h cross log psi s h t minus t naught. Psi as a function of time will be e to the power of minus i h t minus t naught by h cross. Find some constant. And you have to make sure that at t equal to t naught, the left hand side should match with the right hand side. Is that right? So at t equal to t naught, this term vanishes. This is an identity operator. So psi t naught will be psi t naught. 
and this gives you the state vector, initial state vector at T naught evolves in time by this operator to give you the new state. What was Hamilton's equations doing? Hamilton's equation was only looking at the evolution equations in the phase space. But here in quantum mechanics, we say that the information about the system is contained in the Keck vector psi and we are interested in the time evolution of that Keck vector psi and the time evolution is given by this operator and this operator is known as the time evolution operator. So, let's call that as time evolution operator. What are the properties of it? What are the properties of it? Let me call this also the time elevation operator. Formally, people write it as u of t comma t naught. So, what are the properties? u of t naught comma t naught is identity operator. And you can also see some more other properties. What will be the if you go from T naught to T, this is the operator. If you go from T to T naught, it becomes the inverse of the operator. And you can show some of the properties. And those properties will tell you what is the nature of this time evolution operator. That this is the Schrodinger equation, which gives you the evolution of the state vector. Depends on the Hamiltonian of the system. If the Hamiltonian has no time dependence, then I can do this, and this T is what we call it as a time evolution operator. So, the nature of the time evolution operator, as I was saying, the time evolution operator is denoted by the letter U takes a state vector from T naught to T and you can write psi of T as formally as U of T comma T naught times psi of T. Why is norm time independent? Suppose you take the states to be a stationary state suppose. What happens? This evolution operator when you put on the ket, when you put it on the dual of this ket, you will put it as a u dagger, right? complex conjugate and transpose or the adjoint of this u operator. Is this Hermitian? Is u equal to u dagger? What is uh, Hermitian? Hamiltonian is Hermitian. Hamiltonian is the one which is Hermitian. U is not equal to U dagger, but U U dagger is identity. Okay. So this is the beauty that U T comma T naught operating on psi of T naught, we call this as psi of T. If I want to write what is psi of T, I would have written this as psi of T naught U dagger of so, the inner product of psi of t with psi of t is same as psi of t naught with u dagger t comma t naught u of t comma t naught psi of t naught. Okay. And u u dagger or u dagger u is going to be identity. Why? Because Hermitian, Hamiltonian is Hermitian. So, e to the minus i h t by h cross into e to the power of plus i h t by h cross. Right? right? This one is e to the plus i h t minus t naught by h cross, this will be e to the i, this is the h operator, minus i h t t minus t naught by h cross. 
Suppose I had an operator head here and some other operator here. I don't know what to do. Right? Like what I'm asking is, suppose I have B to the A and E to the B. In classical mechanics, you would have written this as a to the A plus B. Can you do that here? Can you do that here? So this one, you have to meticulously write. Because, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Order matters. Unlike in classical mechanics, we could have written A, B, B to the A plus B. You can't do it here. You have to be careful. Okay? So, a lot of things will happen. So, you will see there will be a 1 plus A plus B. Plus then you will also have A squared B plus B squared A. And so on. So, A's will always be on the left side. Thank you. It's definitely not, if you have got A hat squared plus B hat squared plus AB plus BA, then probably you could have written the other one as A hat plus B hat the whole square. So, it is not possible, right? You need to have some kind of an approximation and see what is the commutator of A with B and then maybe there is a way of writing it. Okay, so, these are things which you can play around and see what is happening. Question is, if A B commutator is a constant, then I think you can show that, let us call that constant as some number, some A or something, you can show this as e to the power of a plus b times e to the power of half of commutator of a with b. Do this expansion and check this out. Okay. I use this assumption that the commutator of a with b is a constant. What does that mean? This means that if I take commutator of A with A with B, what will that be? If A B commutator is a constant, it is a constant, so this will be 0. So, you can play around with these commutators. If something is a constant, you will you'll be able to simplify it. In such a case, you can simplify and get something like this. I am forgetting whether it is plus or minus, but you will figure it out. Okay? So, this I am not sure about the sign here. There may be a plus sign or a minus sign. Let's check it out. Okay? So, these are things which where the classical mechanics and the quantum mechanics differs and you have to keep it in mind when you are doing your operator algebra. You shouldn't be like a machine, I know in classical mechanics and you cannot lift it. You have to make sure that quantum mechanics, the uh, concerned quantities which evaluate, if there are products of operators which are Hermitian, you have to try and write the Hermitian combinations of the products of operators and then only do the computation. Okay? So, this is very, very important. So, I have already showed for you that since it is the same operators, A and B are the same operators, then you can add it up. Okay? If the commutator of A and B is 0, then also you can add it up. This is what I was trying to show in the previous slide. Right? So, U U dagger is always identity. But what is that property which you have all seen? These operators are called unitary operators. Right? Unitary matrices are such that complex conjugate and transpose multiplied by the matrix is identity. 
So why, what do I want to do here? I want to reproduce your familiar Schrodinger equation in the wave function formalism which you did, you have done it many times from this approach when we have postulated how the time evolution of the state get vector happens. Okay. So how do you go to the wave function formalism? We did this. This thing is the, the one which is involving the integral over the position with the outer product of the position of position states. That's an identity operator. This integral dx x with the x is an identity operating on the same. So, left hand side is same as right hand side because this is an identity. And we had also defined how to write the wave function. Here you can also write the time dependent wave function as the inner product of x with psi of t. Since Hamiltonian is dependent on t, We are working for a free particle. So the Hamiltonian is dependent on P. I don't know what is P squared on X, but I definitely know what is P squared on P hat squared on a P dot state will be P dot squared I get value times P dot. Hamiltonian is P squared over 2M. So, we wrote the state psi of T in position space, but you could have written it in the momentum space. Right? So, that will give you the Hamiltonian when you operate H on psi of t, you can take the integral of dt outside, this will be H on t and what will I call the inner product of p with psi of t? So, this is a Fourier transform of your wave function, psi tilde of t, t. So, we will call this as psi tilde of t, t. And h on p for p equal to uh, the p squared over 2m will give you just a eigenvalue. So, this is just a dummy variable. If you want, you can put a p prime, p prime, p prime. And then you can use the fact that h hat on p prime is 3 prime squared over 2m on p prime. It is an eigenvalue equation in the momentum space. If you had done it in the position space, we don't know p squared on 2m on x what it is, we don't know. We need to find out. But here in the momentum space, it becomes very simple to write it as an eigenvalue. Since the Hamiltonian is dependent on B, it is convenient to work in momentum space basis instead of working in position space. So, convenience depends on the situation. So, which basis you choose and how to go from one basis to another, all these things we did for a finite two-dimensional linear vector space, we can do it even for the infinite dimensional countable, uncountable where you can define how to go from one to the other or you can directly take an identity operator in the momentum basis because the Hamiltonian states will be eigenstates of the momentum basis. What is the momentum basis? The same like your position basis and doing it in one dimension. So, this is an identity operator and because it is a continuum, inner product of p with p prime should be a Dirac delta function and we can write the arbitrary psi of t as dp there should be a p sorry there is a dp and then a p out of product okay? and psi tilde as, as I said is this inner product of the state psi with p which we call it as 
just to make contact later with the Fourier transform, we call it as a cycle. If we operate Hamiltonian on position basis, suppose we have potential energy which are dependent only on position, which is what we see in the harmonic oscillator, and we operate it on a position basis state, let's take an x naught state, and this becomes, we don't know what is p hat operator on x naught, but we definitely know that v which depends on a position operator will pull out the eigenvalue, which is again a function, the same functional form will be there. This also you have tried in one of the tutorial sheet, right? If the eigenvalue equation of x operator on x naught is x naught times x naught, any function of x operator will give you the same functional form of x naught. Recall? So, I have just written. So, p with x naught. The question is still remaining, what is P with X naught? There are various ways in which you can proceed. You can insert an identity operator in the momentum space, take the inner product of the momentum with position, all these things we can start doing and figure it out how the P operator will be done. So that is what we are going to do now. So we will essentially show, you have all read that the P operator is Px operator. Right? We are going to prove this. We want to derive this. We want to derive that the Px operator can be written as in the position basis as a differential operator with these right signs for the x. So let's go over the proof. And why do we want to do that? Why do we want to do that? It is because we have to evaluate this piece. If we write the differential operator representation here, it would have given me del squared by del x squared with a minus x cross squared. Where are we heading? We are going to head to the familiar Schrodinger equation. We want to see that. But for that, we need to form, formally we should be able to say what this is in a systematic fashion rather than just taking the postulate as minus i squared del x. So, momentum operator, let's do some trick. So, take two positions x1 and x2, x0 and in between the operator is the commutator of xp. What is this? Commutator of xp is ix cross identity operator. Identity operator will not do anything to the states. You can pull it out and write an inner product of x0 with x1. What is inner product of x0 with x1? That is your Dirac delta function. That is the definition of your position basis. So, I x cross Dirac delta function. This commutator xp, you expand first. If you expand the commutator, it is xp operator minus px operator. So, depending on the order, either the x will operate on x0 or x will operate on x1. Is that right? What is this value going to be? This is going to be x on x naught is x naught. That is an eigenvalue. Right? With x naught p operator x1 minus this x with x1 will be minus x1, x0, p operator x0. This extreme left hits the x0, extreme right operator hits the x1. So, the second term already has a minus sign. So, this is what you will get. 
simplify this. It is x naught minus x one matrix element of P operator in the position basis. Steps clear to you? So this is this is the result we have to use for the commutator. And let's look at the simplified equation here. The commutator will be simplified as x0 minus x1 times the matrix element of the momentum operator between x0 and x1. And the right hand side is nothing but your Dirac delta function. So from here, if you take x0 and x1 to be really close, it is like 1 over x0 minus x1 delta function. What is that 1 over x0 minus x1 times the delta function? Have to check it will be a derivative of a Dirac delta function. What is the derivative of a Dirac delta function? Delta of x0 minus x1 by x0 minus x1 is nothing but a derivative of a Dirac delta. So, what have we shown here? From here, the matrix element of the momentum operator in the position basis. It's nothing but minus i h cross del by del x naught on x naught x one. So this is what we are shown. So now from here, what is the meaning of this left hand side to the extreme right hand side? The momentum operator can be given a dress in the position basis. A representation in the position basis as a differential operator. I can put this momentum operator as minus i h cross del by del x operator. And the del by del x operator when it hits x naught, it will give you del by del x naught. Is that clear? So, this is all we are trying to say. So, this implies momentum operator. It implies this stop equation. Momentum operator is minus i h cross del by del x. And if this operator p x operates on x naught, then it will give you minus i h cross del by del x. What does that be? Now this is an eigenvalue equation. Eigenvalue is a differential operator here. It's a differential operator of this case. It picks the x1 difference. Differential operator at x equal to x. Whereas this side I could write it as minus i h cross del by del x as a operator when it hits on like x naught, it will give me minus i h cross. So we have given a position representation for the momentum operator which is a differential operator. Similarly, can you give a momentum representation for the position operator? Then use the same arguments and do it instead of x0, x1, p0 and p1. Redo the same exercise for the matrix element of the position operator in the momentum base. And show that it will have one plus sign. I so that is also seen because if you do a commutator bracket, there will be a relative sign. And please show that x on p naught is i h cross del by del p naught. So that tells us that. So do a similar exercise for the position operator on p naught and verify whether this is satisfied. What I did for the momentum operator, now redo it for the 
position operator and convince yourself that it is the again the differential operator differential operator involves a momentum quantity in general you could write for any state psi of t so earlier we had x0 and x1 x1 can be replaced by any arbitrary state psi doesn't really matter and you can show that the differential operator p if you take the del by del x operator it can hit the left kept and give you a del by del x0 find this what is this position space wave function at x0 so i have given you a couple of pieces here and there and now with this data what is the next step take the time evolution operator or the equation which dictates the time evolution of a kept psi which is h on psi and take the projection on to a specific position in any in three dimensions or one dimension in three dimension you take an r vector and we can write it this way. so now this is the exercise for you h operator is p squared over 2m plus v of r let's take and p squared over 2m can be replaced as minus i h cross del squared by 2m so let's redo this and then so let me do it in one dimension let's come back to so this piece is your time evolution equation and you take the projection to a specific x i can still take the del by del t operator outside doesn't matter and say x of psi t it is the same because del by del t only will hit the psi of t x is not dependent on time similarly here it will be x if suppose we had it to be a free particle p squared over 2m on psi of t suppose we will also do v of x later. So, what let us write the v of x also for the norm. The p has a position representation which is ih minus ih cross del by del x in one dimension. So, you can rewrite this as minus or h cross squared by 2m del squared by del x squared. More, more precisely, maybe I can take an x naught here just to make it more dramatic with x naught psi of t plus plus this term v of x v of x will give you v of x naught will be a number multiplying x naught with psi of t. So, what is this x0 with psi of t? That is the wave function. So, this equation I can write it as i h cross del by del t psi of x0 t equal to what about this minus h cross squared over 2m del squared by del x0 squared psi of x0 t plus v of x0 psi of x0. What is this? This is your familiar Schrodinger equation in the wave function formalism. I postulated an equation for evolution of the state vectors. I tried to systematically write my momentum operator using a position representation which became a differential operator. And then the equation which we get for the wave function is exactly your time dependent Schrodinger equation. So, this is what I am trying to say here that you can do it even in three dimension and you can show that it is nothing but your time dependent Schrodinger equation. So, del squared by del x naught squared will become a del squared operator. The plus. There are a lot of things which I said today which involve for you connections between classical and quantum mechanics. And then I went into the evolution equation. I gave you an evolution operator which is unitary. And then we slowly studied what should be the position representation for the momentum operator. Then I asked you to find what is the momentum representation for the position operator. And then I said you can, using these data, you can actually reproduce your wave function Schrodinger equation 
Thank you, Patricia. So I'll stop here.